Good evening, good evening, and welcome to this service of evening prayer. My name is Reverend David, and I'm one of the curates at St. Matthew's and St. Luke's in Darlington, as well as St. Michael's in Highington and St. Andrew's in Bolham. And a very warm welcome if you are joining us for the first time today. What we're going to do is a service of evening prayer based on the Book of Common Prayer. What I'll do is in just a moment I will minimize myself, and in the background you'll have all the liturgy. So everything we need should be right here at this time. Could I invite you to adopt a posture of prayer? Perhaps plant your feet, close your eyes, bring your hands together, whatever it is that helps and suits you uh, at this time. For it is God himself who has brought us here uh, to meet with him in prayer. So we close our eyes, and Lord, we offer up to you this evening. Beloved, we're come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us sit or kneel in silence, and remember God's presence with us now. We say it together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray now as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. As we come to the Magnificat, I invite you to say this with me responsorially, meaning I will say everything, but I would invite you to join me on the even verses. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now for our first reading. First reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning at the first verse. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, 
in the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And you will be called priests of the Lord, and you will be named ministers of our God. And you will feed on the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you will boast. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robber, robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness I will reward them, and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All will see them, will acknowledge, that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes a sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteous and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. And then verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I don't know if you knew, but Christmas is coming. It fast approaches, and whether we're ready for it or not, it will come. And likewise, the day fast approaches when we will meet our Maker, whether it be on the day of his return or when we instead go to him. There will be a day when each and every one of us will see him face to face. And to some that will be a day of exceeding joy and comfort, and to others, perhaps not so much. I remember there was a theologian long ago named Karl Barth, 20th century theologian. Interesting fellow. Didn't exactly agree with all the stuff he said, but who am I? But what I did appreciate was uh, a little story about he had a wonderful office. And in his office he had a desk, and above his desk he had a wonderful painting. Big old painting in the background. And on that painting was a scene from right after our reading today. There's a scene of John the Baptist uh, there on the side of the River Jordan. And he is pointing. He's pointing. What is he pointing at? It's that scene where he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist is pointing. And John the Baptist, when he would look, John the Baptist, Karl Barth, when he would look at this painting, would think that John the Baptist, this scene that we see in Scripture, this scene in his picture, told us of the very nature of the church, the very job that we as the church have, and that is 
to always and everywhere be pointing to Jesus Christ. And I offer you this little bit of a story because I think it gives us a glimpse of perhaps a context in which we ought to come to our reading for today. Pointing to Jesus. My friends, these things said in our gospel reading today are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. These things are written so that we, now as the readers, may become participants in the great drama of discipleship. The words of our gospel today are an invitation to us and to the whole world and everyone we've ever known to enter into the dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the light, who is the life, who is the word made flesh. We today here in wherever you are watching this, become the audience for John and the Bapti John the Baptist's testimony. We get to perhaps in our imaginations, if you will, be there on the shores of the Jordan River with him to witness for ourselves John's words to his interrogators. And there he is. Look at him. There he is. John the Baptist, wearing his camel hair clothes and leather belt, was out there in the wilderness baptizing and preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And throughout the whole region, the whole area of Judea and Jerusalem, people had heard of John and were going out to him. But as our scripture says, and I quote, he came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to all men was coming into the world. Now, do you hear those words? Just let them sink in for a moment. The author of the gospel is here referring to the one who will come after John the Baptist, and of course we know that's Jesus. He's talking about Jesus, who is God made flesh, the true light. So I ask you, what on earth would the author of this gospel have had to have seen to be able to call someone, or anyone, the true light that gives light to every man? What would he have seen? And what about life? He later refers to Jesus as life and life eternal. What must he have seen in Jesus to call him true light and eternal life? What would any person need to see? And may I ask, what would you need to see? Now, I know I've actually told this story before. It's one of my favorites, so I will tell it again. But forgive me if you're bored of it already. But when I first became a Christian, I was really excited about the gospel. I was really excited about this good news. And I ended up going down to Bible school in Costa Rica. And I lived there for some time. And halfway through, I ended up going up to Honduras uh, to work in an orphanage. And all I wanted to do was share the gospel with these children. I wanted to share Jesus with them. Tell them all about Jesus. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to know God. Be able to know God's salvation for themselves. And, uh, and dwell in that love. And I remember... I happened to be sitting down on a step and uh, looking out at a sunset one night, early on when I first got there. And I was praying. And very distinctly, very clearly, God spoke to me and he said, Try to teach them and you'll teach them nothing. Love them and you'll teach them everything. Let me say that again. Love them and you'll teach them everything. My friends, that's exactly what John the Baptist was doing, sharing the love of God with those who would come to him. Anticipating Jesus' coming, John the Baptist was there in the wilderness, and the whole countryside was coming out to visit him. And the religious leaders of the day sent a delegation to John the Baptist, and they wanted to know what's going on. Who is this guy? And John, he confessed to them freely, I am not the Christ. Or in other words, I am not the one you have been waiting for. John, he baptized with water, but the one who was to come afterwards would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And the religious leaders, they asked him then, Who are you? What do you say about yourself? And John, knowing his place, he as a servant and a herald of the one is to come, he replied, quoting the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Or in other words, he gives testimony to the one who will come after, the one they all had been waiting for, the one the whole of creation has been waiting for. He is the door, the one that the choirs of prophets had all foretold. He is coming. Be ready and go wherever he tells you to. Prepare yourself, for the day of the Lord is coming. 
And John the Baptist, he understands himself as the one who was to prepare that way of the Lord, the greatest prophet with the most honored mission to prepare for the advent of God himself. His entire purpose is to point to Jesus, whose sandals he is unworthy to untie. And you could almost imagine John even saying, I am worthless and the least, but after me comes one who is before me. So let's be clear. It wasn't just some other or greater prophet that was to come after John the Baptist. It wasn't just a greater and more gifted teacher. The one who came after John was someone qualitatively different in every single way. He was perfect human being in every single way, without sin or blemish. The spotless Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus in the beginning, before the beginning, is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. What on earth could have possessed people to write this, to have see said this, to have, to have believed this? What must they have seen? John the Baptist, the first disciples, those who followed, what must they have seen in Jesus Christ? Well, I'll tell you a bit of it. We here in Darlington just finished up recently our Christmas journey. And our Christmas journey is a little program we do in our church where we invite over the course of about nine days, uh, nearly a thousand kids from all the different schools throughout Darlington, all the year two kids. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to invite them into our space and to be able to share with them. And we tell them the Christmas story. And we begin by saying that Jesus is the light from whom all other lights come. And there he was, born in a manger, born in a barn and placed in a manger. And as the story goes, that little baby Jesus, he grew and he grew and he grew and he became a snotty, spotty teenager. And he grew and he grew and he grew and he became a man. And after his baptism, he went about the land teaching and preaching. Teaching and preaching. And what he taught was sort of like seeds. He showed little seeds to the kids. But not so much seeds that you would plant into the ground, but seeds that God would plant into our hearts, our minds, our souls. Seeds that were telling us of the way in which we ought to be in relationship with God, about who God is, how he loves us, and how he has gone to save us, and how we ought to live in relationship with one another. These wonderful seeds that one day would bloom and grow and uh, become very fruitful. But Jesus, he didn't just talk the talk, but he, he walked the walk, didn't he? He who is a light from which all other lights come. He went to the dark places in the world. He went to the dark places in human hearts. He went to those on the fringes, to those who were hurting, to those who were broken, to those who were sick, to those who were imprisoned in their own addictions and their own perhaps literal imprisonment. He went to them. And there in those dark places, he shone in the darkness. He shone the bright glory of God and there brought people back to health, brought, brought people back into relationship with him, brought people back into right relationship with one another. And this is all stemming from God's love of who he is and what he has come to do. I say this. My friends, God doesn't need our testimony. He doesn't need the testimony of John the Baptist or even of the gospel writers themselves. But testimony is given as witness to what God has done for our benefit and for the benefit of the whole world. God has orchestrated this or ordained this to be that these testimonies are given to us as grace and mercy, so that we might believe and have fellowship with God the Father and with Jesus Christ, that we may know eternal life for ourselves. The day is fast approaching when we will meet our Maker, when we will encounter the unapproachable light of life and love eternal. God's glory will be revealed and a consuming fire will go before him, God has sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for God because God loves. Testimony is given of Jesus so that we may be saved. And as Jesus said elsewhere, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, may we always be prepared to give an explanation for the hope that we have been given, for the hope and peace, the hope in everlasting life, the hope and fulfillment. May we, like John the Baptist, always be pointing to Jesus, 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May we, for the sake of the world in all of its turmoil, especially right now, praise God for his wonderful salvation that he has won for us, that the world may believe in him and have life everlasting. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So now we come to the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon, and I invite you to say it together with me. Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We say together the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the special prayer set for today, this third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires and all good counsels and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, could I please ask you to respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day and all that is past, and we thank you for what is still before us. And we thank you for the great story of salvation, for all that you have accomplished and are accomplishing in our midst. And we pray and praise you for all of those who have pointed towards you, all the saints who have gone before us. And especially on this day, we remember John the Baptist and give you great thanks for him, that he points to you in all things, that Lord Jesus, he was faithful to you and he made straight the paths of the Lord. I pray that as your church we will continue in that great calling, that you would move and act through your ministers, whether they be lay or ordained, that you would move and act through your church, that we would make way the way or make straight the paths of the Lord, and people would once again come to faith in you. Send your Holy Spirit, I pray, and guide us in this great task. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for far-flung places where there is disruption 
pain, grief, war, famine, disease, all the horribleness of our human nature is where it's all going to pot. Praying especially for the people in Ukraine, continually for them as they defend their homes. Praying for the people in Gaza, praying for the people in Israel. Lord Jesus, we ask for your mercy and we ask that you bring about your peace. The great desire for human, of the human heart for peace and wholeness and goodness. We pray for that, O Lord, and ask that by your mercy, these conflicts would end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, Lord Jesus, for this nation. As it gets colder, as we approach Christmas, as people are having to choose, perhaps, between heating their homes or feeding their families, Lord Jesus, I pray that you make straight the paths for people to get the help and the resources they need. I pray for those who are unemployed at this time, looking for employment. I pray for those who are employed, but yet just don't have the means to make it all happen. And I pray, Lord God, that you would grant us humility. Humility to ask for help when needed, but also humility to be sensitive to you and your guidance as we might have eyes to see and ears to hear how we might help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, Lord Jesus, for our brothers and sisters who are poorly at this time. All those who are sick or weak or dying. And Lord Jesus, we hold up to you our sister Carrie especially. Lord Jesus, that you would be with her in her hospital bed. That you would come close and she would know your love. We pray, Lord Jesus, for all those who have anything to do with the NHS at this time, whether as employees or as patients. Lord Jesus, that you would guide you would guide the hands of the surgeons, the doctors, and the nurses, and the staff. You would grant us comfort and peace. And Lord Jesus, if it be your will, your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for those who are grieving at this time. Whether it be from a loss some time ago, or a bereavement that happened recently. Lord Jesus, we pray for your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to be with us in our grief. That in this difficult time, for many, this time as we approach Christmas, that you would be with us. And Lord Jesus, we ask that all things be made right in your due time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for your church, O Lord that you would keep us with the spirit of humility and love, that we would see ourselves as stewards and not kings, that we'd recognize our place before you and that our only purpose is to point to you, to bring about your healing, to share your love, to be ambassadors of your light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we shall we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you this evening. Thank you for joining us. As we are fast approaching Christmas, there are many things happening at various churches all around the area. I'm sure the church close to you has many things happening. But if you happen to, happen to be in the Darlington Deanery uh, or anywhere near Highington at all, uh, I invite you to come to many of our several services that we have going on. Particularly on Wednesday and Thursday in Highington and Darlington, we have our Blue Christmas services. Uh, what, look out on our Facebook for the details of that. Of course, this evening we have various carol services, uh, and of course Christmas Eve. Uh, we have lots going on. Christmas Day, lots going on as well. Uh, so do come join us. Worship the Lord in the spirit of, spirit of uh, Christmas, and uh, may you know his love and his comfort at this season. God bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>